Welcome to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. I'm Jennifer Sheehan. I would love to hear from you. Go to the JenniferSheehanShow.com, connect with me on social media, and feel free to leave any questions or comments. Today's show is on a plan for your life. Jeremiah 32, 27 says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? I would love to introduce you to my new friend, James Durham. Hi, James, how are you? Good, ma'am, how are you? I'm great. So, you have a story to tell. Yes, ma'am, I do. So, you were in San Antonio. Well, first of all, let me ask you the first question. How old were you when you prayed to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Um, I first did that during childhood, but after my story and going to my journey and experiencing the truth about heaven when I was there, I did it again at the age of 23. Okay, so when you were young and then when you were older. Yes, ma'am. So, you were in San Antonio, and it was what time at night? You said 9.30? Yes, ma'am. 9.30 at night, and you were riding your motorcycle. Mm -hmm. Okay, what did you have on? <laughs> <laughs> your helmet, right? Of course, <laughs> okay. always wore a helmet. That's the number one question everyone has is, oh, right. you probably didn't wear a helmet. No, right. I had a helmet on, full set of clothes, and was just on the way home from an employee dinner. Okay, so I'm glad you had your clothes on. Yes, ma'am. That's always <laughs> beneficial. You never know in today's world. <laughs> you know what? You're right. <laughs> so you had your helmet on and you had shoes on. Everything's good. And then a lady ran a red light. Yes, ma'am. We I was just going home about 5.5 5 miles from my house, just going over an overpass. And unfortunately, the individual ran their light and I went through and we just got T-boned. But luckily, there was a light pole in the corner which flew me into it. Wow. So I guess that was lucky because if you wouldn't have got thrown into that light pole, what would have happened? Then I would have been launched to the highway underneath and landed in oncoming traffic. But the positive perspective of that is I could have gone out in style. What if I went to a Lexus or a Mercedes or a Cadillac? <laughs> oh, no. So you're making a joke. I got it. <laughs> well, there's always a positive perspective to everything you go through in life. There is. Can you have to accept on that. that. One? Yes, you're absolutely right. So, but wow, what a, a scary experience to have that happen to you. So how do you know how hard you hit that light pole? Um, I don't personally know the exact, you know, numbers, but I do know it was hard enough to where my helmet flew off and went 200 yards away. Wow. Yes, ma'am. So when they took the pictures and everything, well, I guess they had reported that you didn't have your helmet on, correct? Right. Or I didn't even have a helmet or own one, but yet in the report, it's right. sitting right there next to my motorcycle saying, well, right. it's kind of obvious right there. Wow. So, so scary what you had to go through. Yes, I can't even imagine. So what part of it do you remember? All. You do remember it all. all. Wow. Yes, ma'am. It was scary not only for me, I mean, for the short second of the impact scene, but also for my family and loved ones and my employees at that time because it affected everyone, not only in that area, but worldwide. Power of prayer is what really changed everything. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. I'm just so proud of you, just your faith and hearing your faith. Um, it's inspiring to all of us, I think. Yes, ma'am. Um, so, so take me through what happened after you hit that lamp pole. When I hit the lamp pole, my mom's dad, my grandfather, passed away when I was about six or eight years old. Okay. He called me. His name was Opa. He called me, and I saw my motorcycle laying down on the overpass at 9.30 at night with the back wheel spinning. And I said, Opa, that's my bike. My bike's nickname was Jenny. One of mine was Forrest Gump growing up, Mr. Positive. Aww. So it was like, oh, hey, me and Jenny. Jennifer, hey. Jenny. <laughs> yeah, there you go. See, God <laughs> wink. So I told him, Opa, I got to get my bike. And he said, no, you don't, James. It's not your turn. I want you to understand that I love you and I watch over you and my family every single day and I can't wait to see you again. So please make sure to tell them that and Betty, my grandmother that just recently joined him. And then he picked me up and shot me in the sky and I saw the entire city of San Antonio at night. And it was not the plain view, it was the whole city. Wow. Then we went up in the clouds, it was very warm, very bright, and then he set me down like if I'm him and was just massaging my shoulders like that. Wow. So did you realize that you were in heaven? No, ma'am. I mean, at first I was kind of thinking, okay, where are we going? But I did when I saw a bunch of other um, recent right. loved ones and family members come up that I haven't seen in a long time. So you realized when you were looking at them that you were in heaven because yes, they died mm -hmm. and you saw them up there. So did you recognize everybody? Everyone. Interesting. Everyone. I, some, I mean, it was my dad's grandparents, my great grandparents, pops and grandma. I uh, saw them, a uh, family friend, Bryson Watson, who used to race Honda motocross, saw him. And then our family dog, Bull, who was an English Springer Spaniel. What? So you're telling me you saw your family pet? Mm -hmm. I did. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Got a nice look on the face from him. Interesting. So then that tells me if you died, 
for, you said, uh, well, you found out that your heart stopped when you got into the accident mm -hmm. for how long? Do you know how long it was? I don't know how long. I know okay. they had to do some of the pumps. Okay. Um, I think maybe twice. Once. And you know, a lot of people would like to know that because I've heard a lot of people that have died and gone to heaven and there's always that controversy. We know there's animals in heaven because the Bible says there are, mm -hmm. but is our pet in heaven? And you know, my golden retriever, he's 14 and he, it's getting close mm -hmm. and I can't even imagine not seeing him again, but that just gave me some hope right there that maybe Jake will be in heaven too. Oh, of course, yes ma'am. Oh, and then you said something interesting about chocolate cake. So. Mm -hmm. So you told me chocolate cake was in heaven, right? Oh, of course, yeah. That's how sweet <laughs> it is. I think you just made a lot of people happy because <laughs> I was wondering that, like chocolate, it really goes God, chocolate, husband, and kid. And they're good with that. They know that, that chocolate goes before them, but God does go before chocolate in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about that experience. So your, was it your grandmother you said? Uh, yes, ma'am, my great grandmother. A yes, ma'am. What, what exactly happened? Because you all came at different times. At first, when my grandfather was sitting me down, Opa, the one that caught me, mm -hmm. Bull, our fa family dog, came running up, wagging his tail, and he was licking me, and I was petting him. And then after that, Bryson came walking up, and I said, Bryson, what are you doing with my dog? And he said, James, it's not your dog, it's my dog. Bikes killed me, they're not going to kill you. I want you to tell your family and my family that I love you guys and can't wait to see you again. And then my dad's grandfather, my great-grandfather, Pops, pulled up in his Chevy C10 blue pickup truck he used to always drive. And he said, James, it's not your time to be here yet. Get in with me and I'll take you down. And I started laughing. I said, Pops, I can't ride with you because you're blind in one eye. Ironically, <laughs> now I'm blind in one eye. I said, if my wow. dad sees me riding with you, I'm going to get in a whole lot of trouble. Now is where the cake comes in. His wife, Grandma, brought her famous chocolate cake we used to eat all the time growing up when in their house in Tyler, Texas. She said, James, it's not your time yet. I want you to hang out with us, spend time. You're going to go back when the time comes. But until then, eat this famous chocolate cake and play with this toy that I used to grow up with, which was when Bill Murray's was a Ghostbuster. Wow. Yes, ma'am. And that's so, did you, I think once I go to heaven, I'm not going to want to come back. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, I do. Did you want to come back or no? I didn't have a choice. You didn't have a choice. So so that's so interesting. Now I want to go even more. I wanted to go before, but now that I know there's chocolate cake up there and my dog's going to be there, where can I sign up? Maybe I can go bungee jumping or no, I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Something. <laughs> when we come back, James will share his injuries from the motorcycle accident. The Jennifer Sheehan TV show is real people with real stories of redemption, miracles, and overcoming. This is a TV Christian show that gives God all the glory. The show is a 501c3 nonprofit, giving back 100% of donations towards the Jennifer Sheehan TV show. We also partner with Operation Care International, serving and supporting the homeless. In a world that is spreading fake hope, only Jesus Christ and the Holy Bible have the supernatural power to change people and their circumstances. Production for the Jennifer Sheehan TV show is extensive, and we need partners to keep it on air. If you believe in our cause, please prayerfully consider to be a partner for a $20 donation a month or more. May God bless you. Imagine a global movement of people coming together to feed the hungry, to serve the poor, to celebrate. That day is coming. Today's extraordinary feat, Chris climbs stairs. This may look easy, but with severe back pain, it's impossible. Dr. Stephen Courtney and his team at Advanced Spine Center offer exceptional orthopedic care for neck and back pain. For more information on the latest advancements in minimally invasive spine surgery, call today, 972-499-5457. Welcome back to The Jennifer Sheehan Show. Okay, James, so you're on your motorcycle in San Antonio, in the dark, a lady runs a red light, hits you, you go flying into a light pole, mm -hmm. your helmet comes off, and what type of injuries? I mean, I see a beautiful scar right here. <laughs> so where did, how did, what happened? How did that get there? Well, I had a great list of injuries, and okay. the most important one is my brain injury. I sustained a severe traumatic brain injury. The left mm -hmm. side of my brain is extremely damaged. 
which functions, ironically, the ability to communicate, memorization. I mean, each side of our brain does different things, but that's the ability, I'm sorry, the ability right. to be able to do what I am now and on a regular basis. Right, so what was that procedure you told me that they did? Um, I had a craniectomy. That's where they removed part of my skull to let the brain breathe. They usually do that. Some brain injuries don't have to have that done, but it depends on how badly damaged the brain is because it keeps swelling. So okay. they do that to let it continue to push out, and then, you know, it's like a scar. Then when it heals, and when I say heal, it doesn't mean like, oh, it's going to go back to normal. It just starts to go back down. So it's, it gets bolded out, and then it kind of dips in. Okay. So from this, do you ever truly heal from a traumatic brain injury? No, ma'am, you don't. It, there is no finish line. And what's mm -hmm. unfortunate about that is there is no guidebook. It's not like when you break a bone, okay, you have these steps, this is right. the procedure you need to do. When you sustain a brain injury, that individual and its family or caregivers, for those that do lose family or don't have that opportunity, you have mm -hmm. to do what's best for that individual because just because our brains look the same doesn't mean they act the same. And how right. the injury can be sustained, which happens to anyone at any time, and most importantly, anywhere. Wow. And so it was even more than that. I mean, you had over a hundred staples mm -hmm. and then a hole in your leg. Mm -hmm. I did have a hole in my leg. My shifter during impact, my shifter of my motorcycle went into my leg and popped back out. And that wow. also then my leg broke. So I've got a metal pole inside my bone. Wow. I've got two screws in my kneecap and two screws in my ankle. Wow. And then my spleen exploded on impact as well. And your spleen exploded as well. Yes, ma'am. So you were all jacked up. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and it wasn't Mountain Dew. <laughs> and it was about to do, you're funny. So all of this, and you remember everything. Yes, ma'am, I do. I remember not only, again, the impact, the car was, the individuals, what they looked like when I was going into the light pole, but I also do remember the experience of heaven. Wow, it's incredible that you will remember that. Isn't it that most people would not remember that? Yes, ma'am, because when we go through any situation or any traumatic event, our brain actually tries to do everything to erase it. Protect so it's us. very rare not only to remember little bits, but the whole nine yards, if you will. Wow. So then you're in a coma. Yes, ma'am, a natural coma for five weeks. Okay, so they put you in one? No, ma'am, oh, it was no, all it was natural. natural. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and for how long? Five weeks. For five weeks. Yes, ma'am. So I can't even imagine your poor family. Uh, family, coworkers, everyone. They had, um, ironically, my parents were actually going to see some family friends and some colleagues of theirs that they grew up with, and they got a phone call from some of my uh, colleagues or employees, if you will, right. saying James has been in a very bad accident. And they were getting ready to go to the airport the next day. They were packing. They said, okay, how bad was it? He broke his leg or something? He said, no, he's not breathing. It's been a bad accident. He's going to the hospital. You need to get here now. So we had people driving to San Antonio from all over. Wow. So you got a lot of friends that love you. Yes, ma'am. Don't we all? I love that. I have a few. <laughs> <laughs> so all this traumatic injury, you're in a coma. What then, what does everyone start doing? What did the doctor say? The doctors within 24 hours of my accident contacted my family when they were there because my room was the ER room. The rule was you cannot fall asleep in there, you have to leave. It was a constant amount of surgery and they told us up to James and God right now, but James can't do it, so you just have to pray. There's nothing medicine or we can do. It's all up to his choice. So we had people wow. pray literally all over the world. Wow. Yes, ma'am. So that's the power, right? Yes, ma'am, the power prayer. of prayer. Absolutely, the power of prayer. So you have all these people praying for you. They tell you, the doctors are telling you you're not gonna wake up. And didn't they also tell you that if you did wake up that you could become a vegetable? Or they thought that's what was gonna happen, right? Yes, ma'am, because how badly my brain was damaged, and not only my brain, but also my body. It was very hesitating for my parents to hear that in my family. Wow, I'm sure. I can't even imagine what your mom was going through thinking about all this and what's gonna happen to you. So you've got everybody praying and you remember everything once you mm -hmm. wake up. And so you did actually, didn't you say that the, um, the ministers came and anointed you? Uh, yes, ma'am. I was okay. told that. I was asleep the whole time. So you don't remember that part of it because you were asleep, <laughs> no, <laughs> which is good that you don't remember any of that. So they anointed you. We will be right back and we're going to talk about the outcome of what James had to go through and uh, now how great he's doing. I've always believed that trust is one of the greatest compliments someone can receive. When our clients trust our team to handle one of their largest financial decisions they'll ever make, we take that very seriously. 
Having been in the business for over 36 years, I know that trust does not come easily. It has to be earned. Our team is committed to providing the best real estate service possible with the ultimate goal of having a seamless transaction and as little stress as possible. Let us show you why we are the best in the business. It takes a village to raise a kid and change the world. But today, we are more disconnected than ever. But our children still have the same problems. No self-esteem, no social skills, and lack of grit. As a teacher, the most difficult challenge we face is to teach kids who see no value in education. Ethos Village is a digital tool that engages kids, parents, and teachers. So we can engage parents and kids in a fun and entertaining environment. And this great curriculum is highlighted by experienced parents, professional athletes, and celebrities that tell the real life stories. Stories of struggle and success. That show kids, parents, and teachers. It sky's the limit. Visit www.ethosvillage.com. Join the village, Ethos Village. The Jennifer Sheehan TV show is real people with real stories of redemption, miracles, and overcoming. This is a TV Christian show that gives God all the glory. The show is a 501c3 nonprofit, giving back 100% of donations towards the Jennifer Sheehan TV show. We also partner with Operation Care International, serving and supporting the homeless. In a world that is spreading fake hope, only Jesus Christ and the Holy Bible have the supernatural power to change people and their circumstances. Production for the Jennifer Sheehan TV show is extensive, and we need partners to keep it on air. If you believe in our cause, please prayerfully consider to be a partner for a $20 donation a month or more. May God bless you. Welcome back to the Jennifer Sheehan show. So James, you're in a coma. The doctor said that if you woke up, you would be like a vegetable. You wouldn't be able to communicate. You wouldn't be able to talk. Um, you wouldn't be able to remember anything. Mm -hmm. And what's the first thing you said when you woke up? Mom, be quiet. <laughs> Obviously I was holding my trach and not speaking that clearly, but it was, that showed not only that I could speak, but also our memorization was very strong. Right, and you remembered the whole accident, mm -hmm. which is so great and then you were sent to a special hospital. Yes, ma'am, I was. I was sent to Tear Memorial Hermann out of Houston, Texas. Okay, mm -hmm. and what is so special about that hospital? Tear is the number one in the state of Texas and number three in the United States, specializing in brain and spine injury. So it's really great. I mean, I had to go there being like an infant. I had to learn how to push my wheelchair. One means yes, two means no, eat and function, but having that power of faith and once again, positive energy in my mindset, it made me go, completely different path, all thanks to God's prayer and, of course, the listening that he obtained. Right. I love that. So that hospital is pretty hard to get into, right? Yes, ma'am. It's about a three-year minimal waiting list. Wow. And you just got right in like that? Um, when my parents were trying to find out where I was going to go after San Antonio, they were looking at Galveston or other spots, and obviously they would have to get an apartment. They got a phone call, my mom did, ironically, saying we have one opening at Tier Memorial Herman. And what's symbolic about that, it's a continuous God wink, because we're never alone. Right. My Parents got to stay at my grandparents' house, my dad's side of the family, which is walking distance to tear. Wow. So that way they didn't have to sleep in my hospital room with me. They could if they wanted to, but right. they could easily take shifts and leave the environment, if you will, and right. get some of their own mental rest. I love that you say God winks. Yes, ma'am. So you just know that that's just miracle after miracle after miracle that God has given you and just opening up so many doors yes, to, I think, be able to sit here right now and tell your story to inspire others. 100%, yes ma'am. So you've been able to do so much. So the recovery, how long did they say the recovery would take? Um, it can be, everyone's different. I mean, it can be three to five years, it can be 10 years, it can be even longer. Because once again, every brain injury is just associated with that person and the type right. of brain injury it obtained. So forget the brain injury, the rest of it was supposed to take how long to recover? Was that Three to five years. And how long did it take you? Six months. How did that happen? <laughs> Power of prayer <laughs> right. and God's willingness to not only listen, but to let even better things happen than before. Because obviously coming back is a huge accomplishment and a blessing, don't get me wrong. But right. I'm better in so many things than I ever was before, all because of his destination. Wow. 
I love it. And so now um, you met the love of your life. Yes, How did you meet her? Um, we both met. My childhood dream was to go to Florida State. That's where my parents went. That's where my mom's family went. That's where they're located. I was born in Tallahassee and got prepaid college tuition for FSU, Florida State University. Right. And growing up, not only with a learning disability, but it just wasn't going to be a possibility for me. Right. But after getting that brain injury, I'm not saying go get a brain injury. To get free college. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> but no, I got that and I transferred then to Florida after being released from uh, Brain Injury Rehabilitation Center and mm -hmm. my learning disability was vanished. I still have a brain injury and there still are right. a lot of difficulties that I battle with. But I was able to not only finish and have a higher GPA, but then I also was able to live my childhood dream and be like my parents and go to Florida right. State University and that's where I met my wife. I love it. Yes, so you guys were both going to college and that's how you met her? Yes, ma'am. Okay. How long ago was that? Uh, that was in 2014, January of 2014 when our path started to cross. Okay. And you just fell madly in love and got married? Every day. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I love it. And you've been married how long now? Uh, just recently, two years. Two years. Congratulations. You, I just celebrated 21 years. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. That's a long time, right? Yeah, it is. It's a blessing <laughs> right there. It is a blessing. People ask me all the time, how have you been happily married 21 years? And I tell them, marriage is hard, but Jesus Christ is the rock of my marriage. And that's how I've been happily married. So I believe that that is the key to marriage. Amen. is staying close to the Lord and close to him and his word. Mm -hmm. So, so met the love of your life, got married. Um, now you are, did you say you're writing a book or you're going to write a book? I've had some opportunities. Yes, ma'am. I've okay. been speak, I've been, uh, invited to be in portions of different books. And I actually was recently in a uh, Miss Michelle Prince's book, a chapter. Oh, very good. Yes, ma'am. So I wonder how that will be writing a book with all this. I think that it would be a bestseller. I think that you should <laughs> definitely you. do it. I mean, my book comes out in about a month or so now, and it's hard to write a book, but you can definitely do it, and you have an amazing story to help other people. Thank you, ma'am. So, and now you have a radio show too, right? Yes, ma'am, and I also have an organization that is tied in with my radio oh, show. Oh, a charity, right? Yes, ma'am. What's the charity all about? The charity, TBI One Love. You know, obviously TBI stands for Traumatic Brain Injury. Some individuals don't know what the acronym is, but I changed that. With I'm glad you journey. clarified it to me, because I'm like, what? <laughs> well, I changed that, you know, because right. to me, instead of traumatic brain injury, it is traumatic. I change it to this beautiful injury because it is a blessing. Aww. It is a life-changing event that right. everyone goes through, not only the individual, but the family. And right. I started that organization to be a difference maker, to let it. people know a positive form of hope, inspiration, education, awareness, and prevention. Wow. Yes, ma'am. So look at you book coming out. I'm just going to speak <laughs> it out because you're going to have a book, uh, a charity, a radio show, what does the radio show do? Is it something similar? Uh, it is something similar. It airs three times a month on the first, third, or fifth Monday of every month, and it covers 50 states and 32 countries. I've had amazing, not only athletes, doctors, and other individuals that either have a brain injury, know someone, or want to help educate people to, in the silence, spread our positive form, and most importantly, paint the world green. Wow. I love it. I love all this. You, you know, you're doing more than a lot of people that have not been through what you've been through. You realize that, right? Yes, ma'am. It's so inspiring to see that, I mean, starting a charity, having a radio show, and all of this to build awareness and to help people is pretty amazing what you've done. Thank and you. who knows, maybe if you wouldn't have gone through all this, you wouldn't be where you're at right now being able to help others. Yes, ma'am. Have you ever thought about that, that what, what a blessing all of this was to be able to be where you're at right now? 100% because there are no coincidences, only God incidences because he doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't. You need a fist bump for that <laughs> one. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the show. I Thank appreciate it. And um, what is your website? How can we get a hold of you? They can get a hold of me on LinkedIn. For those of you that don't have LinkedIn, you can visit tbionelove.org. My contact information is there or any form of social media. Perfect. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you, ma'am. God bless you. Thank you. When we come back, we're going to talk about how you too can go to heaven. The Jennifer Sheehan TV show is real people with real stories of redemption, miracles, and overcoming. This is a TV Christian show that gives God all the glory. The show is a 501c3 nonprofit giving back 100% of donations towards the Jennifer Sheehan TV show. We also partner with Operation Care International, serving and supporting the homeless. In a world that is spreading fake hope, only Jesus Christ and the Holy Bible 
have the supernatural power to change people and their circumstances. Production for the Jennifer Sheehan TV show is extensive and we need partners to keep it on air. If you believe in our cause, please prayerfully consider to be a partner for a $20 donation a month or more. May God bless you. I've always believed that trust is one of the greatest compliments someone can receive. When our clients trust our team to handle one of their largest financial decisions they'll ever make, we take that very seriously. Having been in the business for over 36 years, I know that trust does not come easily, it has to be earned. Our team is committed to providing the best real estate service possible with the ultimate goal of having a seamless transaction and as little stress as possible. Let us show you why we are the best in the business. Imagine a global movement of people coming together to feed the hungry, to serve the poor, to celebrate. That day is coming. Today's extraordinary feat, Chris climbs stairs. This may look easy, but with severe back pain, it's impossible. Dr. Stephen Courtney and his team at Advanced Spine Center offer exceptional orthopedic care for neck and back pain. For more information on the latest advancements in minimally invasive spine surgery, call today, 972-499-5457. Welcome back to The Jennifer Sheehan Show. I have known so many people that have died that are close to me that I don't believe have said that prayer to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And unfortunately, being a good person, a good man or a good woman is not what gets you to heaven. This is what the Bible says in John 3, 3, Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that he has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. God owns heaven. He decides who he's gonna let in. He says that you have to confess with your mouth and pray to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you haven't prayed to receive Jesus, pray with me. Jesus, I know you died on the cross for my sin. You rose again on the third day. Please forgive me for my sin. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Tune in next week for more incredible stories on faith.